Well, welcome everybody to this East Denver Twitter space. Um, I'm I'm going to be hosting. I'm Lauren, and you, you, I think I know basically everybody in here. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited just to talk about East Denver and talk about what Giveth is doing in East Denver and how it's going. It's really great to have Shannon and Danny here, as well as you guys, Griff and Mitch. You know, I love you guys. Um, so let's just, to, to kick it off, maybe we can just do a round and get everybody to introduce themselves and talk about either their work at East Denver or their work with Giveth. And um, yeah. And so we'll start off with Griff. Yeah, so obviously I'm uh, the founder of Giveth and have been pushing blockchain for good since 2015, really. Uh, and am, am so excited for ETH Denver this year. Like, I got so excited that I even, for the first time in seven years, changed my banner and profile picture just to, like, update it for ETH Denver. Uh, so really stoked. And uh, I am so I somehow Shannon and Danny roped us into give it into like helping with the impact track. And so I think I'm, I wrote a bunch of bounties for the impact track and pretended to make some changes to like what was already a pretty good um, qualifications for the impact uh, role. And of course I'm just supporting the whole give it team and all the impact quests and cool stuff that's, that's coming out of us that I'm sure I'll let Mitch explain uh, maybe I'll throw it over, but I'll throw it over to Shannon first to introduce herself. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, uh, we sure roped you in. Uh, it's because we can't get enough of you guys. We love this team. We love the intention. We love everything that you guys are building. And you've been a part of the Denver community for a really long time and have been helping people think about how Web3 technology is really going to help the world. And we see a lot of people really wanting to do that and having great intentions and not always knowing how to do that. So bringing you guys in with all of your experience and your big old hearts to help um, set some guardrails, make some suggestions, give some examples, and just offer leadership and mentorship there was a huge win for us. And we think it's going to be a really big one for the community. So thank you so much. I'll pass it. Oh, go ahead. You can pass it. Pass Danny. Hi, hi. Um, I'm Danny. I uh, run content over at East Denver. Um, was super, super excited to have Giveth join us this year as part of our uh, review committee. Um, I called Shannon and said, hey, turns out we got a thousand new applications in like the last three days of the deadline. We're like drowning. What do we do? And she's like, do you have impact applications? It's like, of course. She's like, I'm going to call Griff now. And then, you know, I figured like someone would show up and, you know, help for like an hour and then, you know, do whatever. And instead Griff showed up and he's like, I brought my team. We're here to help. We got this. And so, um, you know, we appreciate you guys so much. And you actually were such an important and pivotal role in helping shape um, what everyone's going to see now for East Denver in terms of like, like who, like who are the contact, like the, con the, the specific like impact applications and talks that were selected. Um, we're excited to be featuring, you know, Griff and Giveth on our main stage. Um, but the reality is that this year we have an entire track just dedicated to um, really cool impact related um, stories. So try to figure out, you know, what is impact in public goods? We, we sort of navigated the idea of like, you know, the refi in the region movement, the any sort of social impact related um, stories, any sort of like, actually, we thought a lot about certain pieces of identity and privacy, depending on what they were also being something that's like considered like a foundational human right that shouldn't belong to corporations, but rather like should be on a public rails track um, that belongs to everyone. And yeah, so thank you so much for all your help. And we're really excited to be here. Thank you, Danny. So happy to have you here as well. Um, so let's just sling it over to Mitch and you can introduce yourself and then we'll get started diving into the meat. Sure. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I work for, for Giveth as well. I've been there for a little bit over two years. Uh, Lauren and I started together around the same time. Um, most of my work in Giveth is focused around, you know, dowing it up um, within our team doing the governance stuff, keeping us on track um, as a group. And also like a little bit of project management. I write some documentation. I do a bit of development, a little bit of this and that here or there. And 
I'm super excited for Eat Denver. I'm like through the moon between like reviewing all of the talks for the impact quests and seeing all the stuff coming out of the mentorship and then the impact quest slowly evolving into something that's going to be really, really cool. I'm, I'm overall just like super stoked for it. And also so, super stoked to see the new venue, the new sport castle. That's, that's going to be cool, but I'll pass it back to you, Lauren. Thanks, Mitch. Okay, cool. Um, so since this is a space all about Ethan, we've already been talking a little bit about it, but like, let's kind of zoom out even more and just start. I, I want to ask either Shannon or Danny, whichever of you wants to jump in, just to give an overview of what is ETH Denver, like at its base layer, and what's the objective of the event, and even why is it hosted in Denver? Sure. Yeah, uh, Danny, I'll, I'll take this one since I, I, I answer this question quite a bit when talking to our awesome sponsors who make the event possible. ETH Denver is totally free to attend, and we do that through the support of a whole bunch of great organizations that come together uh, with two goals. The first one being we want to onboard as many newbies as possible. And we don't do that in crypto by having $1,200 conference tickets. So it's really important to us that it's free for everybody. Anyone is welcome. Um, and then the second goal is that we really try to push the tech of Web3 forward. So rather than just having a whole bunch of talks and throwing some pretty rad parties, we really want to make sure that the biddle is contributing to decentralized technology. So we've got, you know, this year we've expanded the hackathon to be quite a bit longer because the hackers last year were clear in their feedback and said, we want to submit better projects and we need more than three days. So we've expanded the hackathon. We've expanded our newbie offerings. We have something called Camp Biddle this year, which is designed solely for totally new to Web3 people. So like a Blockchain 101 boot camp that's going to run for four days and culminate in a certificate at the end so that people who come and want to learn do more than just kind of looking around, but actually get to stick their toe in the pool and possibly walk away with an internship or some sort of intro role in Web3. So those are our intentions, um, plus just having a really great time bringing together a bunch of communities. Um, John Pollard calls it a community of communities because we've got a bunch of different L1s. We have a whole bunch of different people working on everything from impact to finance to, you know, different forms of community and DAO tooling. You know, everybody can come in and focus on the things that are the most interesting to them. So we're really excited to bring together all sorts of different um, perspectives so that everybody can dig into the thing that is the most exciting and the most transformative. And I'll be curious to hear what Danny has to say about what is ETH Denver. Super. So yeah, I mean, I think um, ETH Denver is probably the closest thing to Burning Man you're going to find in the crypto uh, event circuit, uh, unless you attend Griff's actual Burning Man uh, you know, blockchain summit or whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, people, people tend to ask us like, you know, what is this all about? And I think at the end of the day, like East Denver is what we all make it. And that's what makes it so extraordinary. Um, if there, if this was sort of like some sort of a commercial entity that was centralized, it wouldn't have a lot of heart and soul and people will sort of like pop in or, you know, go do the side event circuit and hang out with their friends. But I think that because this is like, something that we build for ourselves um and that we put so much heart and soul into um it really it really becomes like a very magical place so you'll see that east ender is sort of a mixture of these like og um crypto builders and um community organizers mixed with newbies who are crypto curious and everyone comes together and really preserves the ethos of what makes um, this culture so extraordinary. It's about open source technology, about open source communities. Um, the reason that we, you know, push so hard to be able to keep ETH Denver free for everyone is because it really lowers the barrier to entry to anyone who is excited who cares enough and, and wants to be part of this. And I think that makes a huge difference because we can't really be advocates of this, you know, transformative movement that's open source and it's going to be borderless and democratize the world. But also like you can't be part of it unless you can spend several thousand dollars to attend X, Y, Z, you know, conferences where things are happening. Like that's really not what it's about. And I think um, the fact that Denver has managed to 
you know, really be the creation of like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of volunteers who just come together and like put their like time and energy and heart and soul and effort into this is what makes the place magical for, for everyone who comes by. And, um, you know, we always hope that people who come, who come and have a wonderful experience, um, pay it forward and, you know, find, find a way to help someone who's new, find a way to, you know, enhance the experience for the collective. And so far that's been, it's been really great. Yeah, thank you so much. Man, ETH Denver really has a totally different vibe than most crypto conferences. Actually, last year, ETH Denver was my first crypto conference ever, ever. So I just thought that's what crypto conferences were like. So I was like very deeply spoiled right out the gate, right out the gate. Um, and you're already on the website. You're featured in a bunch of our photos. So you made quite the splash. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's so awesome. I mean, I think it's like really an awesome example of like how East Denver just kind of like brings people into the space and then like shoots them up into the sky. It's like it's like a launch pad for so many people to grow and like has even just like created that impact for me personally. Um, yeah. So, OK, um, I got some other questions in here. I'd love to talk a little bit while we still have Griff in the mix. I'd love to hear from you, Griff, about um, what your experience has been with East Denver events. Why do you like it? What makes it special? I know it's been like a really special event for you. So I'd love to hear from you on that. Yeah, I mean, it's by far my favorite conference in the space, and I'm not shy to tell everyone that. it's uh, It really is, like Danny said, the closest thing to Burning Man out there. Uh, it, it, there's something about the no price, like a free ticket and the hackathon vibe, you know, that re made it really special. And also there, it's always so uh, impact focused more than any other conference I've ever been to, even though that's not like a, a specific, it doesn't seem like it's a specific tenant of ETH Denver. I think it's just the organizers are very aligned with the, the web three public goods movement and the push here. But you know, it's it's some, there's just something magical about like like I I avoid the snow in general. I avoid cold weather, but I will not miss in East Denver. You know, I don't care. I will bear the bear. I'm so glad I got moved back a little bit. Hopefully, it'll be a little warmer this year. Um, but yeah, it's just really the vibes. Everyone gets together uh, under a hackathon mission, and then uh, and that the builder vibes are huge. And the impact vibes are huge. And then the size. I think it is the largest Ethereum conference every time it happens. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Danny or Shannon, but like, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest conference out there. And somehow it's getting even bigger this year. I, I don't know how uh, it's going to be in the new venue. Like, that was one thing that was also really unique about East Denver was the old venue. So we'll see. I, I imagine it's only going to be crazier uh but like the things that ETH, that ETH denver does like this year they they have a scholarship where they're giving out um free beds not even free beds they're actually giving you a hundred dollars stipend if you apply and need a scholarship to to get there to mitigate the cost of lodging in denver which is just really expensive you know it's this like this real value this really strong value system that i see from the conference that they execute on con consistently uh and i don't even know the magic that makes all that possible it, it just seems impossible to throw a free conference with like a bunch of bounties for impact uh not to mention uh, places to stay scholarships uh, i mean the connections with sponsors and the effort around this this uh it's like Dis Disneyland meets crypto is what it feels like every year. Uh, we love that. We try not to take ourselves too seriously. Obviously, we're filled with cartoon characters and buffacorns and rainbows and all sorts of stuff. But uh, yeah, we're, we're expecting quite a few people this year. Um, historically, we were like 2,000 people banging around an old kind of cypher punky building. And last year, we grew to like 12,000, which was a surprise for us. And we had some growing pains for sure. Uh, and this year, we've already had something like 25,000 applications come in. Um, we're hoping that that turns into, you know, somewhere over 10,000, maybe even 15 or 20,000 people. So we'll see. It's always a little bit interesting hosting a free conference. You don't really know how many people are coming. But yeah, we're really excited. The new venue is crazy and it's kind of an Alice in Wonderland, choose your own adventure kind of situation. So 
um, yeah, we're really excited to see all you guys there. Hey, really quick, I heard that you can, well, uh, I, I, uh, Lauren and I are actually getting an RV and we're going to stay in the parking lot. Is that, I, I heard that you could even have bonfires in the parking lot. Is that still really possible? I cannot commit to the fire part of things, but yes, we do totally have room for RVs. It's going to be near the hacker hostel that you mentioned. So we've got shower trucks and all sorts of stuff to support people who want to come in and want discounted lodging. Cause again, we're really committed to trying to make it a, like affordable and something that everybody can show up for. So bring on the RVs. It's so exciting. Griff and I just this past weekend were at Love Burn in Miami and it's like a regional Burning Man festival. There's just like all these, all these RVs and people camping and it, it feels like we're just going from that into like another version of that. But like not only is it just like people who are there gathering together to have a good time, but it's also people who are gathering together to like support and uplift each other and then use tech for good. It's like I, I love I love saying that just like the reason that I got into the web three space at all is because it's like smart hippies just trying to trying to change the world with tech it's like the perfect convergence between like the engineer and like the the grounded connected spiritual person um yeah so but anyway talking about uh things that are different about this year in comparison to last year like there's already it sounds like almost double the amount of people coming a new venue what else is has changed um yeah from the eat denver standpoint i'd love to hear from maybe we'll, we'll I'll hear from danny first about yeah like what's new this year in eat denver okay what's new um we have a lot more stages um so the entire team, the, club, the entire content team has not really slept the past few days, um, but we're super, super excited to see how they're coming up together. So this year we're, um, we have essentially, let's see, five, six, seven, we have eight stages running in parallel during East Denver. So we have so much content for you. You won't know what to do with it. Um <laughs> It's, uh, it's really cool this year because historically we've mixed it all up together. Um, and that worked really well when we were small. But now that East Denver has gotten so, so big, we wanted to make sure that people could follow narratives that they were interested in. So the, the idea was that like you would go to East Denver and be able to like find your tribe. And so we figured, like, what do you do to find your tribe? It's like you got to find a village. And so with that, we, we created villages this year. So um, when you walk into the venue, there are now five villages on the first floor. And um, every village sort of represents a concept and an idea. And it's, it's like not 100% perfect, but we sort of did like our best to try and wrap the themes around the villages. So like Deftopia, you know, has a lot of the uh, infrastructure talks and they're like really hardcore, like, you know, protocol engineers and, and in there. So if like that's if that's what, if that's the experience you want, which some some people told us like that's what they were here for, like, you know, OG super technical East Denver track, then you just go hang out at Deftopia and like that's your jam. And if you if you're more interested in, you know, impact and the region movement or the solar punks, uh, or figuring out, you know, how do we how do we redesign some of the foundational pieces of society so that they're owned by the people rather than the corporations. You go to Regionlandia. That's what we named it, Regionlandia. And um, we're actually excited. This is something that like Shannon actually pushed really hard for, but it was having Regionlandia be the, the first village when you enter. So everyone kind of has to go through social impact when they enter, you know, just like a nice little reminder, like hang out for a bit, check out who's around. Um, but, but essentially, like, you know, we have another village for uh, Dowtown as well. And we have uh, Meadowland, which is where we're putting all the uh, NFT degens, the gamers, um, the the metaverse, you know, peeps and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then uh, the last, you know, the last one is DeFi District. So, uh, you know, really, really making sure that, like, the vibes match and that people are able to find each other and that, um, you know, the, the, the content can be tailored to your own kind of individualized experience. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. Um, 
this year we also have a huge main stage um i think shannon might know better but like i think the audience size is something like 2500 people i think is the capacity so it's gonna be pretty big which means you know all of our all of our uh all of our speakers have to come to slay. <laughs> I think this is going to be the largest stage most of us have been on um, because it's really, really starting to get to, to those, to those levels. Um, and then we have a couple of really fun, you know, performances that are coming through. There's a secret one on uh, Saturday night that you won't want to miss. So main stage uh, right after the privacy segment. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what's new. Wow, it's so exciting. I love this map. Like, I, I'm like planning the map in my head of like all the different villages and the, uh, organized by concepts. It's so, it sounds so exciting. It's really like an Ethereum festival. Um, yeah, so um, I would love to also, let's hear from Mitch as well. Mitch, we've been, we've been quiet over there in the corner. I'd love to hear from you a little bit about um, what's different this year for Giveth. Like, what, what does it look like for Giveth to join ETH Denver this year? And what participation are you guys doing? Are we doing? Thanks, Lauren. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, where do we start? Um, it was really, really exciting to get that first message from Shannon slash Griff about the the booth that we'll be getting there. So we'll we'll be having a an XL sized booth um, in Region Landia to help uh, promote public goods and impact. And uh, on that same thread, uh, as I mentioned, we did a lot of the reviewing for the uh, impact track uh, talks uh, specifically, and also. Uh, I know you and Griff are working hard on the mentorship program as well for the hackathon. And I mean, we have a bunch of really cool bounties that we submitted in there for the hackers to build projects that will uh, hopefully create impact for the local Denver community. Um, and probably the most exciting thing that I want to share are going to be impact quests. Uh, and so this kind of started uh, around the same time that we got invited to to do the impact track mentorship. And I, we were kind of thinking around, okay, that's cool, you know, and, but how can we actually make like an effective lasting impact in Denver? And, you know, how can we leverage Giveth as a donation platform to come in there and, and facilitate this work? Um, and so we're going to be launching this game. Um, it's going to take place virtually and physically at the event where participants will have a set of quests that they can go and complete. Um, these quests can range from donating to a local Denver nonprofit uh, through Giveth to picking up trash on their way to the conference to um, buying some pizza through a pizza Dow project that will go towards um, making a pizza donation to a local shelter. Uh, in-person volunteering initiatives with some partners like Hedera Hashgraph and others. Um, and through this whole process, they'll be completing these quests and getting these, these pull-ups that basically said, you know, I, I completed this quest. And they'll be able to redeem these pull-ups for prizes on the other end. So depending on how many different impact quests you complete, you'll be able to redeem those for, say, like a piece of Giveth swag or a piece of ETH Denver swag, um, or maybe tickets to some of the real, really cool side parties that happen during ETH Denver. So um, we've got a whole huge list of, of people that have partnered up, including uh, ETH Denver the, uh, yourselves donated uh, a bunch of swag, actually. Um, and this is kicking off starting today, actually. People can start participating virtually. Amazing. It's so exciting. I'm so excited for the impact track. And like, I even was looking at, we just actually tweeted about it from, from Giveth, like probably within the last half hour. And it links to the notion doc that shows all of our quests in there and uh, all the different things that you can do and the prizes you can get. And I was thinking of like already getting started and trying to start claiming them, even though I'm like helping organizing it. I think it's just such a fun way to, to get involved. And I love the framing of quests as well. Um, yeah, so I know, Griff, you got to jump out here in a second, but maybe I just give you one more chance to speak before you do. Um, uh, is there anything else that, that Mitch didn't already cover that you're excited about uh, for ETH Denver from the Giveth perspective or from your personal perspective? Like, what are you looking forward to this year? 
Well, there there is a controversy about this pizza party that Mitch mentioned about donating the pizza to the local local uh, local shelters. I'm advocating that we actually put pizza in the hand of people and have them hand them out to homeless people and have an opportunity to have a connection with people out there instead of just walking by all the time. You know, I, I just I can't under uh, I can't overstate how fun impact quests are going to be. There's going to be so many cool opportunities to actually you know make make your conference event more than just a conference but something that is meaningful where you feel good like hey i didn't just go to denver to nerd out i actually went to denver nerded out like like a mofo but then also had a i actually had an impact on the local uh on the local issues and and remind us a lot of at least a lot of us why why we're he- why why crypto is here and how it can help so I'm just really, really excited about that. And I also want to give a major shout out to some some people in the crowd, like Zero X Joshua, and I see uh, Peregrine in there. I didn't know that was your handle, man, but that's fun. That's cool. And actually, oh man, Hunt just left. I just lost Hunt, I think. But uh, some major organizers even listening here. Uh, it's it's really the behind the scenes crew. I'm sure that there's like, yeah, especially this year, it's got to be over a hundred people putting ETH Denver together. It's such an epic, epic undertaking. So thank you guys so much for everything you do to make make everything run so smoothly. And not only is it the biggest and, and best conference, it's, it's, in my opinion, the best, most well-run. I've never seen any major issues uh, at the conference, and it's just incredible that you guys can pull off such an event. So, well, thanks, thanks for throwing me the last words, Lauren. And, uh, and yeah, I'll throw it back to you. Thanks for jumping in, Grace. I'll talk to you soon. Um, yeah, actually, you know, on that topic, I, I am wondering about why why is Denver, like why Denver? Why did East Denver start in Denver? Like what, what impact can having this like huge crypto conference in Denver have? And I'd like to pass it either to Shannon or to Danny, whoever wants to speak to that. Sorry. Uh, like why why Denver is that the primary question? Yeah, the question is why Denver. Like why does Ethereum Denver? Well, obviously it takes place in Denver, and that's Ethereum Denver. But like, why did it emerge in Denver? Like, what what impact could this type of conference have on the local communities? Um, I mean, why Denver? Like, why why anywhere? You know, like it happened here because John Pollard, the founder, is crazy (laughs) and he had an idea and he just went for it and I missed the first one um but grew up in Denver and when I'd heard such great reviews about what happened here I wanted to come check out what was going on in my hometown and I think a lot of it has to do with the vibe that the, the team created you know like with not taking it seriously and making sure that it was free and all inclusive, you know, like that just felt really different at a time in like 2018, 2019, when people were charging as much as they could for crypto conferences. It was like the opposite of that. And I love the fact that, you know, it's it's kind of still a question of like, why Denver? And that I think inspires a bunch of other local uh, event hosts for ETH events around the world, you know, like, why your little town in Panama or why, you know, somewhere that people haven't traveled to before, because you never know what's going to be the next cool place to visit. It doesn't need to all be New York and San Fran and uh, London kind of places, you know, it can, it can really sprout up anywhere. And it, it, to me demonstrates the core of web three, which is you can have like the best tech in the world, but if the community doesn't care, you're never going to get off the ground. And it really is all about community where we are. Like everything's about who cares about what you're doing and who puts wind at your back. And the fact that we've built such a great community, I think is largely due to the people who are a part of it. You know, everyone who shows up each year and, you know, works well together and collaborates and creates cool stuff. Um, One of my favorite quotes from the press coverage last year, I think it was in Time Magazine, was, you know, talking about the reporter saying for themselves, like, for a tech conference, there's a whole lot of hugging going on. (laughs) And that just speaks to how great the ETH Denver attendees are. Um, So, yeah, I think it's a combination of things. But, I mean, Denver is really arbitrary. This, This community, I think, gathers globally and could be anywhere. But it has a lot to do with the fact that, we came at it from just a really caring about everybody kind of perspective and the people who come buy into that and further it, which is our favorite part. 
Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I think like why Denver? Why anywhere? And and really this idea of building community is really important. I, I even thought at DevCon in, in Bogota, I was just like sitting around in the group of people. I'm like, these feel like my primary friends. Like this is my core group of people. And we just like are like a decentralized neighborhood. And we just like happen to converge upon different cities around the world. It's such an interesting thing working in this like web three space that like really kind of transcends borders and can go into a global perspective. Um, okay, cool. So, so then like bringing it back into, um, into the, the region space, the impact space, Danny, you were talking about region landia and it, it being like one of these villages that's kind of like a, like a solar punk, Region movement thing. Can you tell us a little bit more about what else is in Region Landia? Like, I know, I mean, I know Giveth so, is part of it, but I don't know much else about it. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. So, in terms of the villages and who else and what else is in it, Shannon's actually the person that built them. Um, I I am the person that put the content on the stages and the stories and the ideas, but but Shannon is the one who cares really, really deeply about the communities that are part of Region Landia, and like she's the one who advocated internally to have that um be a village um because it's not straight up a profitable village and so it was it was really like you know coming together and saying it doesn't like this matters and it's important and it should exist and there's a reason this village should exist instead of a different village um so shannon if you want to talk about it let's kick it off Thanks, dear. Um, yeah, I mean, impact has always been one of the the main tracks of East Denver. So one of the things that we just grew on this year, um, like personally, I had the agenda that uh, post SBF, we really need to focus on like public goods and things that are happening uh, in positive ways in Web3, rather than, you know, like young white guys getting loaded. So it's a big focus on um, like the, the regenerative side of things. And big shout out to Hedera for being our first track sponsor this year that like impact often kind of withers on the vine and people aren't that excited about it. And this year it was the first and they were really out in front of saying, uh, we want to lead the way here and doing all of the cool quests with you guys and helping out locally and being super committed to everything that's going on um, to talk to people about how this community cares. It's just super inspiring. But Region Landia is going to be filled with all sorts of fun people this year. We've got groups from DEI initiatives. We've got uh, different DAOs. We have people building cool technology. We've got Kevin Owaki and Super Modular. Um, so it's not just the kind of like traditional nonprofit kind of org that you're going to see there. You're going to see all sorts of different approaches and people doing different things. We're putting up um, a booth for Turkey earthquake relief. So please keep an eye out for that. But yeah, it's just a, a bunch of people who are doing things for the right reasons and who really care. So uh, yeah, as Danny said, um, I've been a big advocate for this and I'm super excited to see what comes of it. That's so cool. And is there like somewhere that there's is maybe on the website where you can just like see all the information of what's in each village and what's in each track? In terms of the booths? Um, no, we don't list that out. It's kind of, it, we find that it gets a little bit. You, you have to come experience it. That is the whole <laughs> point of this. You have to show up to the village not knowing what you will find. That's so great. Back to the burner vibes. It's like just go into the space and get lost and pulled in every in, in whichever direction kind of pull calls you. Oh, it's so great, man! It, I'm so excited about East Denver this year, and the more that we talk about it, the more excited I get. Um, yeah, so I guess then in in the in the vein of preparation, um, what what are some tips and tricks or some some thoughts about like how people can best prepare themselves for the experience so that they can really have the best experience possible. And I'll just like leave it open to whoever wants to speak to that. I'll jump in with some practical tips that people may not know. So basically um, this year per usual, East Denver is split up into uh, East Denver Biddle Week and East Denver, you know, the main festival. And so Biddle Week is in this 
warehouse in Rhino. It's a series of buildings kind of interconnected that you sort of jump in and out. It's a pretty normal setup, right? You're like you're downtown somewhere. So so that's going to feel like super you know familiar. What's really going to be different is when we really switch over to the big venue on that uh, on March 2nd. And um, that's like a whole world into itself. So it's like, I would say like prepare for East Denver the way you prepare for Disneyland, you know, like plant you're planning to go there once and then you leave at the end of the day or if you're griff you leave at the end of three or four days right <laughs> like show up with you know like take comfortable shoes like bring like layers of sweaters because it's a warehouse so you don't know if you're going to be hot or cold um like make sure you have you know your pack with you that you can do day to night because like the there's like uh day events and night events happening there on uh on most days now, you don't have to stay for the night events, but like if you do want to, it's like really hard to come in and out. Um, there's nothing next. There's nothing nearby. It's just a highway. Um, so you really like you yeah, really want to be. If, we no, shuttles. We're gonna be ready, yeah, well, that's true. We're ready for shuttles. But like, you know, the shuttles are going to be packed. Like it's going to be hard to move. Like, you, you know, it's like, yeah, it's viable to come in and out. It's not easy to just dash in and out. So I think it's like historically people have dropped in and out of East Denver sometimes during the day um, and other people have been immersed the entire time. And I think this time around, you're just going to pick a time in which you show up and a time in which you depart. And that's kind of, you know, that is your entry and exit for the day because it's not super like, I mean, you could realistically come in and out, but it would take a lot of effort. And so I think just being prepared to like be present at East Denver for however long you want to be present is really important. Cool. So, oh, also, okay. one, more, one more feature this year. Um, so you can see our schedule live on the website. And apparently, if you log in, there's a function that lets you like pick the sessions of content that you like, and it lets you build a custom schedule. I haven't tested this out yet, but um, apparently, it's a feature. So if it works, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so, so the, there's basically, it's like two completely separate venues that are in two completely separate areas, the one for Biddle Week and the one for the, the main venue? I mean, they're like very nearby areas separated by a gigantic highway, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you just totally can't like walk across it all. There's the only way to get from one to the other is shuttles. You, you can, you can walk under, it's just a, you know, it's like 20 minutes. So it's totally doable. Uh, we just don't, you know, in Denver, we never know if it'll be 60 degrees and sunshine t-shirt weather or if we'll get a foot of snow. So a little bit of both. Wow. So cool. Cool. Yeah. You, even I'd like to pass it to Mitch as well. I know, I know Mitch, you, you haven't been to this new venue in Denver, but like, do you have any tips or tricks for in general? Um, I was like festival goers, conference goers. Like, do you have any tips or tricks for, for people to have a good experience at ETH Denver based on your experience from last year and previous conferences? Hydrate, make sure you sleep. <laughs> Those are some pretty obvious things, you know? Uh, I'm really curious, like, especially since we're like locking ourselves in the day, it's like, I'm curious if there'll be like some Zen spaces around there where people can just like plug out and, and like take a nap while they're still at the venue space. Oh yeah. You know, actually I, that's a question I would love to know the answer to as well. Is, is there, are there, is there going to be the Zen space again this year at ETH Denver? It was honestly, it was my favorite spot last year, just like in the hustle and bustle so many people to have somewhere I could just go and decompress and like stare at my phone in the quiet of someone pay, playing like some singing bowls. Is that happening again this year? Of course. We love the Zen zone. We're bringing back gong baths and puppy petting and we're going to have cacao ceremony it's going to be a super awesome space so we'll have the zen zone we'll have the dj chill room where you can listen to like nice vibes and hang out in bean bags plenty of room yeah and this in this year you're even going to have something called forest yoga where uh, a yoga teacher will make you you know roar like a lion or like chirp like a bird so lots, i have, lots I have of another pictures. important question this is very important um will there be an arcade yeah, it's right next to the Meadowlands stage. Oh, yes. arcade, and there's, there's going to be like a mini DDR tournament happening where people are going to yes. like be battling against each other. You know, I don't know the exact details, but um, 
There's wow. um, a person who's been org- there's a person we whose entire role it is to organize the arcade. <laughs> so, we, we've got that's probably what I. Yeah, it's I'm, huge, and it's going to take your tokens. I'm a bit shameless, but I think that's what I spent the most time on last year was the DDR machine. Yeah, Mitch is like a reigning champion, actually. We have some great gifts from Mitch's like <laughs> DDR. Well, we need you to lobby in the DDR world, Mitch, because we tried to have uh, like a bunch of DDR champions come in and actually do like a Saturday night, like big tournament with some of like the world leaders. And the people who run the games uh, poo pooed being t- uh, related with crypto and pulled out. So get out there and lobby for how rad the people in crypto are. All right. Well, we're going to have to get some content and then send it back to them and give them the FOMO experience. Amazing. Okay, cool. Um, so also, I'm wondering about, um, since ETH Denver has so much of like an impact focus, uh, does ETH Denver do anything uh, to reduce the environmental impact or to make sure that, yeah, that it's like creating a positive impact on its surroundings? We do. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, I helped implement like composting programs. We always offer, you know, like water bottles and try really hard to um, ask people not to use single use papers or plastics. Um, I'll be honest, it is kind of impossible to run an event without things getting thrown away. You know, you've got people eating off of disposable, uh, you know, plates or going out to the food trucks. Um, you know, we, we do our best. If anybody has ideas on how to make a conference more carbon neutral, I am interested to hear. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it is really hard. I think it's just like if everybody kind of does their best, like uses refillable water bottles and avoids the plastic and even just kind of like bringing their own utensils. It's like everybody who participates also can create a a positive impact. Um. Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, then let's dive in a little bit like back into the, the constructs of things. I'm wondering a little bit more about Fiddle Week and like how how it how it works and if people are able to still get involved and participate and jump in at all. What do you mean by get involved and participate? Like everyone's welcome to attend and like interact and enjoy. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, can people still, like, jump in on the hackathon projects? Like, how does it work? Do people just, like, oh, kind of yeah, go yeah, there? Okay. And so, so basically, everyone has to register on the website. That's very important. The tickets are free, but, like, you have to register to get a ticket. Um, it's on the website. There's a big button that does it. And then um, the hackers will be able to start hacking on the 24th. And that's really new for us because typically we'd wait until the weekend for to let, you know, people start hacking. So they would spend all week learning and then, you know, the last two, three days hacking. And this time around, we're starting the hacking on the 24th. So you can learn and hack at the same time. And kind of as Shannon mentioned earlier, that's based on feedback that we got from builders that said that it was too jam-packed. I think someone said the content was distracting. Um, (laughs) And, uh, you know, all sorts of suggestions as to, you know, giving people more time so that they hackers don't feel like they have to choose between hacking and enjoying the festival itself and so by spreading it over a longer period of time people can jump in whenever whenever they feel like they're ready for this um and yeah i mean we're super excited fiddle week is a combination of um different venues it's a series of um programming ranging from like you know super 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 you know technical deep deep dives on like ZK tech all the way to um, we're going to have the screening of the new Julian Assange documentary on March 1st. So um, it's actually pretty cool because it's going to be premiering in uh, LA the night before the day before and then coming straight to Denver um, after that. So we uh, we're super excited to be hosting like all sorts of varied content and for for biddle week we're also excited for it to be a decentralized part of the festival so we encourage all these other organizations to go out and like build awesome events that like they own and they and content that they create and, and putting that together for their communities so you know i heard like gitcoin is having a mini summit somewhere beautiful and um 
a lot of people are raving about WalletCon. There's an Interop Summit. Uh, there's, um, you know, just like a ton of content. If you, if you start to see like what the decentralized programming for East Denver looks like, it's really extraordinary. And I think, again, it's representative of like community self-organizing and creating creating something for, for themselves and others who want to enter. And we really try to foster that during, during Bit of Week. Um, and I'm super, super excited to see, you know, what comes through, not just from like our, you know, content, but rather what everything, what everyone else is creating. And like, I've carved out some time in my schedule to go check out other people's contents and lineups and stages. Yeah, that's so awesome. I'm wondering it from also Shannon and Mitch, are there any side events that you guys are particularly excited about or that you're, you have us not to miss? I'll pass that to Mitch because I'll be too busy to get to experience any of it. So I'll, I want notes from everybody who enjoyed stuff. Oh, okay, there we go. I got it to work. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost in Shannon's boat, but I can say um, we we do have some tickets to some really really cool parties, and I've been I've been trying to keep up to date on all the parties happening. Um, no guarantee I'm going to make it to to any of them, but. Uh, particularly, I noticed Divinity got a really, really cool event off the ground and it looks like it's going to be a, a small capacity, very, very cool experience there. And I think that's going to be happening on the first. Um, there's another one from One Inch. I think there's going to be a party happening on the second with them An Unlock the Block party, which I'm not sure I'm supposed to talk about, but that's going to be up there too. And I think you can get tickets to most of those events through participating in impact quest. So um, if you should check out any of those or you see them on your radar, uh, just remember you might be able to score some tickets by creating some impact. Oh, amazing. That's, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, then I guess the, the, the last question I kind of have here, one, one of the last questions I have here is about any particular talks then. So like whether talks at East Denver or somewhere, somewhere on the side, like, I think, I mean, I know Mitch was reviewing speaker applications and Danny and Shannon, you guys are in the deep of it all. Um, what are some talks that you're particularly excited about or want to direct people to? All right, I think that one's for me. Um, okay, so you're definitely going to want to catch uh, Griff on the main stage. Um, you know, if you if you look at the schedule online, you can see uh, where he's at. Um, I think that there's going to be some really, really awesome uh, content coming through from um, someone who wrote music for the Beatles, I think, and Beach Boys. He's like a really, really like OG composer, and he's entering the NFT space now. And don't know him. I watched the videos from his submission. I think he's a riot. Um, he, he was most famous for like his work with David Bowie. So, uh, that one is in the Meadowland track, uh, on I think Friday, but if you basically like look for Bowie, you'll find, you'll find him in there. I think that one's going to be really fun. Um, there are a couple of cool panels on identity coming together, uh, decentralized social media. For me, the most the most uh, exciting segment I think is really going to be the privacy um, segment, which is going to be happening uh, starting Saturday afternoon. Also on the main stage, um, we're going to have keynotes from some like really really awesome awesome personalities. Like for example, we have the co-founder of Tor, the Indian Router who's going to be kicking it off. We have um, another, we have a fireside chat with um, Frances Hahn, the Facebook whistleblower, which I think is really, really cool. She's known to be one of the most, um, you know, famous whistleblowers and, and the EU recently implemented whistleblower protection laws based on uh, the secrets that she was able to unearth about how, you know, these large social media corporations are really like absorbing data and, and using that to influence you. Um, there's going to be a really cool keynote on uh, privacy and security from uh, a hacker named Alien. So if you're into the whole, you know, uh, white hat hacker um, 
explorations. I think she's going to be really, really cool for that. Um, we have um, some amazing, amazing panels coming together um, where we really talk about being on the front lines and the war against coders and like, you know, how, how, how is that playing out? And then one of my favorite panels is called Take a Stand, where essentially, essentially um, panelists discuss like what we can do to protect ourselves from overreach from uh, governments and other institutions that are stepping into our privacy and like what are the scenarios that can occur if like we don't do that now. Um, we have some amazing people for that panel, uh, including like Marta Belker and also um, uh, Anaya Robinson and Anaya. Anaya is actually a uh, a Latinx queer trans man who was also an amazing policy and privacy um, expert for the youth, for the ACLU in Colorado. So, I mean, the the people that we've invited are truly like extraordinary humans, all in their own right. Um, I also want to say that like we've put a lot of energy into making sure that we're curating stages that are also extremely diverse um, from, from a you know, people perspective, a gender perspective. We want to have people from, you know, all, all around the world. We, we bring people of color, uh, internationals from multiple countries. We're really just trying to make space for everyone. We think that like, you know, Ethereum and Web3 communities are a rainbow and we really strive to make sure that like that is represented in our stages and that everyone can can walk up there and, and like find someone like themselves, see themselves on the stage and say like, oh, I am I am welcome. I am part of this community. I can be a part of this too. Um, and so I think that that's what you're going to see all around. And, and I would say, you know, we have a mix of speakers, you know, who are who are really established and some others who are total, total newbies. Um, and I would say, like, give it a shot. And if you're ever bored, make your way upstairs to the top floor to something called the Bunny Slopes. And anytime in the first one and a half days, that stage will be really running some really, really fun open content that's just, like, philosophical explorations or, like, you know, um, really accessible talks that don't require any any. Uh, explicit like deep blockchain knowledge just a desire to discuss the topic and explore and learn like why it's relevant and why it matters um there's a really cool talk called um where do you belong in web3 um that talks about the different roles in social media what caught my eye is that one of them was described as meme lord so <laughs> if you're ever curious about the possibilities uh that is a real job in uh in crypto <laughs> and uh one of my other highlights on talks is um, a researcher from Stanford and MIT who spends his time doing MEV research and teaches um, EVM related courses. And his talk is actually on the ethics of blockchain and what we should really be considering if we are going to be creating this new internet, this new world that's supposed to democratize uh, access to capital and opportunity and be borderless and bring people together. Like, what about the ethics underlying all of this? What do we have to think about? What are, what are really important pieces that we have to consider? And um, yeah, I think, I think that sort of like wraps it together. Wow, this is an epic list. I was actually taking notes the whole time writing them down. It's like, Wow, thank you so much for the inside scoop. Like all of those talks sound incredible. Um, so we're we're almost at the top of the hour here. Uh so just before we close up, I'd love to just do a really quick round or or open the floor to any any last thoughts or any like last things that you're super excited about or looking forward to for East Denver. We want everybody to come. Come and join us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this new space. It like, I got I got a bit of the scoop on like the the floor plan blueprints, but I'm like, what is this place like, Shannon? It looks, it looks incredible. This venue, so I'm super excited for that. No, I'm also super excited also for the Gibbic Impact Track 
quests so or impact quests so make sure that you also come by region landia hang out with us um check out the swag that we have to offer check out the different opportunities you can do um on, online at giveth.io i think it's giveth.io slash quests um and help me out here Give uh, it slash quests. Yeah, it's also pin. You can find it in uh, the the tweets that are pinned right here. And yeah, you're right. It's give it your slash quests. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for joining. This is such an awesome space. I was, yeah, I'm I'm feeling super inspired and super excited to see you all next week and just like experience this amazing festival that is ETH Denver. And thank you so much to Shannon and Danny. Thank you for taking time out of your, out of your day to come and hang out with us and just talk about this. I know you must be super swamped coming up in the last like week here. So it's really, really appreciated. We love you guys. We can't wait to see you in Denver soon. Thanks for all you're doing.